I will not fear to look within today. I'm Willie from the Ozarks. Thank you all so much for joining me in studying A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the original edition here on Sunday, November the 5th of 2023. I will not fear to look within. I will not fear to look within today. Let's, let's read what it says. Within me is eternal innocence, because it is God's will that it be there forever and forever. Within me is eternal innocence, because it is God's will that it be there forever and forever. I, his son, whose will is limitless as is his own, can will no change in this, that you have eternal innocence. You can't make any change in this. For to, den for to deny my father's will is to deny my own. To look within is but to find my will, as God created it and as it is. I fear to look within because I think I made another will which is not true, and made it real. Catch that? I fear to look within because I think I made another will, which is not true, and made it real. Yet it has no effects. Within me is the holiness of God, the innocence of God, your innocence. Within me is the holiness of God, within me is the memory of him. I will not fear to look within today. The step I take today, my father, is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is the holy altar to myself, and there I find my true identity. Again on the prayer. This step I take today, my Father, is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is the holy altar to myself, and where I find my true identity. <laughs> you know, uh, as we look within, he tells us, don't be afraid to look within today. And what, you, you, you might think to yourself, well, I'm not afraid to look within, but I want to tell you a story about true story about happened to me a uh, true story everything I tell you is true as far as I can tell <laughs> and that's that when I was first exposed to the ideas of meditation or looking within I was a little bit afraid and actually quite a bit afraid I'd been trained in a particular um, uh, philosophy that um, that kind of looked down on meditation and that maybe the devil would come control your mind if you just let it be empty. And so I was pretty, pretty, pretty concerned. I hadn't read The Course in Miracles at the time. And I was, I, I, and I, but I knew I wanted to learn how to meditate. At least I thought I did. I didn't really know what it was, but I was attracted to the idea of, 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 of knowing myself and knowing God and being open-minded and quiet, listening to what the Bible called the small, still voice. So 
I came into the meditation periods when I did meet my teacher, Charlie. I told you about him yesterday. I was a little apprehensive, but I wanted to do it. I, I, I thought highly of Charlie. And I, he was a farmer close by to where I lived. And um, I thought, you know what? I, I want to learn to meditate. And, and so I would always come into my meditations with this prayer. Before I would sit in the silence, I'd say, God, lead me in the truth. Show me what is true and loving and good. And I'm praying to the God of, of love, the God that is answering my prayer, that you are the God of, of love, of good, of truth. And I want you to guide me. So I, I prefaced my meditations with a little prayer that said, Creator, creator of what's good, of what's love, of what is um, peaceful, what is joyful, what is true. I commit myself to you to guide me and lead me. And that made that, that really helped me. And uh, so I would encourage you, if you've come from kind of a background where it's shunned to, to look within and you've come somewhat timid or afraid to look within, no need to be at all. <laughs> he explains it right here. And, and you know, say a little prayer and ask God for your gui for guidance in going within. I will not fear to look within. Within me is eternal innocence because it is God's will that it be there forever and forever. I, his son, whose will is limitless as is his own, can will no change in this. For to deny my father's will is to deny my own. To look within is but to find my will as God created it and as it is. I fear to look within because I think I made another will, which is not true, and made it real. Yet it has no effects. Within me is the holiness of God. Within me is the memory of Him. The step I take today, my Father, is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is the holy altar to myself, and there I find my true identity. I will not fear to look within today. You might even say, I will not fear to meditate today. <laughs> okay, well, let's go. We'll, we'll read what is the second coming uh, after we've looked at our, our manual for teachers reading today. And we're going to read who are God's teachers and who are their pupils. So, number one, who are God's teachers? A teacher of God is anyone who chooses to be one. His qualifications consist solely in this. Somehow, somewhere, he has made a deliberate choice in which he did not see his interests as apart from someone else's. Wow, catch that. His qualifications to be a teacher of God consists solely in this. Somehow, somewhere, he has made a deliberate choice in which he did not see his interests as apart from someone else's. Once he has done that, his road is established and his direction is sure. A light has entered the darkness. It may be a single light, but that is enough. He has entered an agreement with God, even if he does not yet believe in God. <laughs> He has become a bringer of salvation. He has become a teacher of God. Paragraph 2. They come from all over the world. They come from all religions and from no religion. They are the ones who have answered. The call is universal. It goes on all the time everywhere. It calls for teachers to speak for it and redeem the world. Many hear it, but few will answer. But it is all a matter of time. Everyone will answer in the end, but the end can be a long, long way off. That's what I used to think of as ultimate salvation or ultimate reconciliation. Everyone will answer in the end, but the end can be a long, long way off. It is because of this that the plan of the teachers was established. Their function is to save time. Each one begins as a single light. But with the call at its center, it is a light that cannot be limited. And each one saves a thousand years of time as the world judges it. To the call itself, time has no meaning. 3. 
there is a course for every teacher of God. The form of the course varies greatly. The form of the course varies greatly. So do the particular teaching aids involved. But the content of the course never changes. Its central theme is always God's Son is guiltless. And in His innocence is His salvation. The central theme is always God's Son is guiltless. And in His innocence is His salvation. It can be taught by actions or with thoughts, in words or soundlessly, in any language or in no language, in any place or time or manner. It does not matter who the teacher was before he heard the call. He has become a savior by his answering. He has seen someone else as himself. Boy, it reminds me of love your neighbor as yourself. He has seen someone else as himself. He has therefore found his own salvation and the salvation of the world. In his rebirth is the world reborn. Four, this is a manual for a special curriculum intended for teachers of a special form of the universal course. There are many thousands of other forms, all with the same outcome. They merely save time. Yet it is time alone that yet it is time alone that winds on wearily and the world is very tired now. It is old and worn and without hope. There was never a question of outcome for what can change the will of God. <laughs> but time with its illusions of change and death wears out the world and all things in it. Yet time has an ending. And it is this that the teacher of God, and it is this that the teachers of God are appointed to bring about, the ending of time. For time is in their hands. Such was their choice. And it is given them. And then, who are their pupils? Let's go ahead and read that also. Number two in the Manual for Teachers. Certain pupils have been assigned to each of God's teachers, and they will begin to look for him as soon as he has answered the call. They were chosen for him, because the form of the universal curriculum that he will teach is best for them in view of their level of understanding. His pupils have been waiting for him, for his coming is certain. <laughs> Again, it is only a matter of time. Once he has chosen to fulfill his role, they are ready to fulfill theirs. Time waits on his choice, but not on whom he will serve. When he is ready to learn, the opportunities to teach will be provided for him. Reminds me of what my teacher used to say. He'd say, the te uh, when, the te when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So evidently you're ready if, if, if I've appeared to you or maybe somebody else is getting ready to appear to you. Be open for that. Be ready for that. To learn the universal curriculum that what? You're innocent and that you are as God created you and always will be, regardless of what you believe to the contrary. Paragraph two, under who are their pupils? In order to understand the teaching learning plan of salvation, it is necessary to grasp the concept of time, which the course sets forth. Atonement corrects illusions, not the truth. Therefore, it corrects what never was. Further, the plan for this correction was established and completed simultaneously, for the will of God is entirely apart from time. So is all reality being of him. The instant the idea of separation entered the mind of God's Son, in that same instant was God's answer given. In time, this happened very long ago. In reality, it never happened at all. <laughs> Three, the world of time is the world of illusions. What happened long ago seems to be happening now. Choices made long since appear to be open, yet to be made. What has been learned and understood and long ago passed by is looked upon as a new thought, a fresh idea, a different approach. Because your will is free, you can accept what has already happened at any time you choose, and only then will you realize that it was always there. 
As the course emphasizes, you are not free to choose the curriculum or even the form in which you will learn it. You are free, however, to decide when you want to learn it, and as you accept it, it is already learned. Paragraph 4. Time really then goes backward to an instant so ancient that it is beyond all memory and past even the possibility of remembering. Yet because it is an instant that is relived again and again and still again, it seems to be now. And thus it is that pupil and teacher seem to come together in the present, finding each other as if they had not met before. The pupil comes at the right time to the right place. This is inevitable because he made the right choice in that ancient instant which he now relives. So has the teacher, too, made an inevitable choice out of an ancient past. God's will in everything but seems to take time in the working out. What could delay the power of eternity? And paragraph 5, the last paragraph for today. When pupil and teacher come together, a teaching-learning situation begins. For the teacher is not really the one who does the teaching. God's teacher speaks to any two who join together for learning, for learning purposes. The relationship is holy because of that purpose, and God has promised to send His Spirit into any holy relationship. In the teaching-learning situation, each one learns that giving and receiving are the same. The, de the demarcation they have drawn between their roles their minds, their bodies, their needs, their interests, and all the differences they thought separated them from one another fade and grow dim and disappear. Those who would learn the same course share one interest and one goal. And thus, he who was the learner becomes a teacher of God himself. <laughs> so the student will become the teacher too. And of course, the teacher is learning. And that's how he learns, by teaching. Those who would learn the same course share one interest and one goal. And thus he who was the learner becomes a teacher of God himself. For he has made the one decision that gave his teacher to him. He has seen in another person the same interests as his own. So you might think that we have the same interests. We both are interested in in reaching into the silence and finding our innocence and finding God, remembering the self that we seem to have forgotten that's been preserved by us by God. Okay, well, let's go take a look now and, and at um, our um, associated reading with uh, our lesson today. I will not fear to look within today. And I'm so glad that, that uh, I have the opportunity to to share with you these truths that I so much want to learn myself. What is the last judgment? Oh, that, no, 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 that's, that's coming up uh, in a couple days. What is the second coming? Christ's second coming, which is sure as God, is merely the correction of mistakes and the return of sanity. It is a part of the condition which restores the never lost and reestablishes what is forever and forever true. It is the invitation to God's word to take illusions place, the willingness to let forgiveness rest upon all things without exception and without reserve. It is the all-inclusive nature of Christ's second coming that permits it to embrace the world and hold you safe within its gentle advent, which encompasses all things with you. There is no end to the release the second coming brings. As God's creation must be limitless, forgiveness lights the second coming's way because it shines on everyone as one and thus is oneness recognized at last. The second coming ends the lessons which the Holy Spirit teaches, making way for the last judgment in which learning ends in one last summary that will extend beyond itself and reaches up to God. The second coming is the time in which all minds are given to the hands of Christ to be returned to spirit in the name of true creation and the will of God. 
The second coming is the one event in time which time itself cannot affect. For everyone who ever came to die or yet will come or who is present now is equally released from what he made. In this equality is Christ restored as one identity in which all sons of God acknowledge that they all are one. And God the Father smiles upon his Son, <laughs> his one creation and his only joy. Pray that this second coming will be soon, but do not rest with that. It needs your eyes and ears and hands and feet. It needs your voice. And most of all, it needs your willingness. Let us rejoice that we can do God's will and join together in its holy light. Behold, the Son of God is one in us, and we can reach our Father's love through Him. Okay, well, and let's, um, you know what, I almost forgot what on earth is going on, but let's take a moment to, uh, to look at what's going on around the world today. American Football Day. Bank Transfer Day, and I looked that one up, a voluntary, it's, it's a, an encouragement for a voluntary switch from commercial banks to not-for-profit credit unions. I'm going to look, definitely going to look into that in more detail. Commercial TV Broadcast Day, Daylight Savings Time ends in the U.S., it ends on the first Sunday in November, which is today. Firewood Day. Um, and you know what, firewood day, you want, when, you know, I, I burn firewood, I, I burn wood to keep warm. And you want to, I, I, I pick dead trees that have dead and have fungus growing on them or, or they've been dead long enough. I can tell they didn't just die. Uh, and no leaves and your know, branches starting to break off. They'll be dry. And I, and, and so I, I burn that kind of wood as my oak is the main thing I have. But I like to have a little bit of elm or other dry wood that burns real fast, like pine or something, and, and or soft maple. Learn what woods have that will hold the coals, like oak, hickory, um, uh, Osage orange. That's the best. <laughs> and and then woods that burn real quick, and that will get your house warm real fast, and will get your other things burning good, like pine and and. Um, uh, your, your softer, lighter woods. Anyway, learn which woods to use to have coals that'll last when you choke it down for a long time and which woods have your dampers open wide and burn nice and hot and you can really get your house warmed up quick that way. So learn that. That's important if you're burning wood. Uh, Guy Fawkes Day, which is a, a, a United Kingdom, a lot of people burn bonfires on today, and it's based on a guy who, with a, a name Guy Fawkes, who other with other Catholic conspirators tried to blow up Parliament in 1605. I, I suppose they were unsuccessful. <laughs> International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church, National Donut Day, and eat eat few donuts. They're they're not real. Highly nutrient rich, obviously. Uh, don't don't eat too many is what I'm trying to say, or or none at all. National Gunpowder Day, uh, also the gay Guy Fox Day. That's another name for it. National Love Your Red Hair Day, National Remembrance Day for the victims killed by illegal aliens, New York City Marathon, Play Monopoly Day. World Tsunami Awareness Day and tsunamis, you know, those big waves that are out in the ocean or Great Lakes, uh, big lakes, uh, are caused by earthquake quakes under the water or, 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 or even above water, I guess. But earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, and, and explosions underwater, it could even happen from asteroids and, and large meteorites hitting the water. Um, and Zero Tasking Day might call that eat take it easy day and i want to tell you about one more edible landscaping um, uh, mulberry called the izzy dwarf mulberry it's a morris alba and the izzy says in edible landscaping izzy mulberry is a small tree bush that produces an abundance of black mulberries usually fruiting the first year after planting not as wise as Girardi when it comes to early bud breaks because of winter warm spells. 
similar to Shangri-La and Pakistan in that respect. Introduced from Japan, space 10-foot circles, circles zone 6 through 8. And I also found it on Loggies.com. And here's what it said. I love what I found in Loggies.com. It said uh, that they're from China. Rare and hard to find, this dwarf mulberry has performed admirably, admirably for us as a container plant. The fruit is larger than our dwarf mulberry, and the plant flowers and fruits most of the year in repeating cycles. When grown as a container plant, its plump sweet flute, fruit is easily picked and is also easily protected from birds with lightweight netting. It is hardy as a garden plant in zones, they say seven through nine. Uh, edible landscaping said that good in zone six. When grown outdoors, it is delicious. When grown inside, it will hold its leaves and continue to flower and fruit as long as the light level is high enough. So it looks like that's a fruit that you could grow throughout the winter inside keep it outside in the summer and bring it in in the winter and keep it lots and lots of light and it'll keep making fruit it looks like okay now let's look at our our our, our lesson once again i will not fear to look within today within me is eternal innocence because it is god's will that it be there forever and forever i his son whose will is limitless as is his own, can will no change in this. For to deny my Father's will is to deny my own. To look within is but to find my will as God created it and as it is. I fear to look within because I think I made another will which is not true and made it real. Yet it has no effects within me is the holiness of God. Within me is the holiness of God. Within me is the memory of him. And the prayer says, the, the step I take today, my father, is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is the holy altar to myself and where I find my true identity. I will not fear to look within today. Okay, well... Let us um, close with our song again. Thank you so much for joining me. And I was going to try to sing a little bit out of uh, What is the Second Coming, but I don't know if we're going to have time today. Let's not be afraid to look within. Do your longer meditations of quiet. And until tomorrow, I will not fear to look within today. <laughs>